Okay, hello, uh, and welcome to this uh, BlueFind tutorial video. I'm Ere Maijala, and I work with BlueFind at the National Library of Finland. Today, I'm going to introduce the multi backend ILS driver. The multi backend driver uh, allows uh, multiple ILS drivers to be connected to a single WooFind installation. It's, uh, it works just like uh, any other ILS driver uh, from the WooFind point of view and uh, allows one to connect uh, to any combination of uh, actual ILS drivers. So if you have multiple ILSs that you import records from, you can also get status information, patron services, etc., using the multi backend driver from all of these uh, backend systems. Uh, the multi backend driver also works with the multi ILS login method and allows you to choose the target or the backend that you use when you log in to find using the ILS uh, login method. Also, users can have several library cards connected to the different ILSCs. So if you have, a, like, a, if you're patron in, in multiple libraries, you can have, a, have all of the library cards connected to the same account in BlueFind. Especially useful when you use something like Shibboleth for, for the main authentication. Some of the features of the multi backend driver are that uh, it can proxy any ILS driver method to the actual drivers and vice versa. It can also detect uh, some of the features that are supported so that uh, not all the backend actual drivers that uh, connect to the different ILS systems have to support every, every single method or every single function that uh, the ILS drivers are, are possible in the ILS drivers. Uh, with multi ELS, like I mentioned, it allows selecting the login target from a list of allowed, allowed ones. And you can also choose which ones to allow. So there can be like uh, seven different ILSs, but only three of them uh, allow you to log in to have some patron functions. The rest of them maybe provide uh, uh, holdings and status information and such. And, uh, and as, it, as a feature, it makes everything transparent to the actual ILS drivers. So, so the, the actual drivers don't need to know that they are being called by the multi backend driver. And the same goes the other way around. WooFind doesn't need to know, at least mm, usually, that uh, it's connected to the multi backend driver. But there are some prerequisites uh, for using the multi backend driver. All the records that are indexed in uh, WooFind Solar Index uh, need to have a source prefix that uh, indicates the ILS they are connected to. Usually, this is uh, something that's, uh, that's prefix dot and then the actual identifier. Uh, also, this allows you to index uh, the same identifier from several sources without them overlapping. Uh, for for WooFind's uh, indexing with SolarMark, uh, adding, adding a source prefix is documented at this URL pointed in the presentation. Also, patrons have a source prefix. So when you log in using a library card, you get the source prefix uh, on the username or the catalog password, or uh, I mean the catalog username. And uh, there are some uh, requirements, uh, for instance, with holds, the source prefix of the patron and the actual record to be held need to be the same so that the actual, the actual ILS connection doesn't try to do something weird like a, like a place a hold on a completely different item. Most functions uh, use either the patrons or the bibliographic record source prefix to determine the ILS to connect to. And this means that uh, this information has to be available to, to the functions and also when checking for uh, support of, of certain functionality. There are some limitations. So the multi-backend driver only connects to a single ILS driver at a time. 
uh, and doesn't merge the results from multiple ILSEs. There are several reasons for this. One being that uh, it gets complicated pretty, pretty easily. And when, when there is actual functionality that the patron can initiate, like renewing uh, loans or, or changing patron information and things like that, uh, it would get overly complicated easily. Get item status is, is an exception to this, as it's, uh, it has been designed to actually carry the, the statuses of uh, several items. So it can also multiplex the cost to the different ILS drivers. There are also some uh, non-ILS specific functions that always use the configure default driver. For instance, uh, getting new items from the catalog is, is always using, using the default ILS because there is no no kind of source information available from WooFind what to use. Uh, also, some of the settings in config INI in the catalog section, for instance, are global. So it's often necessary to set them to use the driver configuration. For instance, the holds mode could use the driver setting so that the drivers can now actually tell what the real possibilities are. Some functions, mm, typically some that are un unconditionally en enabled in WooFind that cannot be configured, may return a default empty value, whatever it is for, for the function call in question, unless a driver is configured for the source. This means that you, it's possible to import new data sources without having to uh, have uh, have configuration for all of them in the in the multi backend driver. Uh, multi backend driver makes uh, takes care of the prefixes. So when a record that has a source prefix uh, is uh, is uh, related or the identifier is re related to the actual ILS driver, the actual driver doesn't get the prefix. It only gets the actual identifier. So they don't need to care. And also when, when the ILS driver returns an identifier, for instance, a patron ID, uh, it will be automatically prefixed when it comes to WooFind or the other, other parts of WooFind. Also worth mentioning is that the multi-backend works great with deed application. So if you have the same, same records from several sources, uh, it is possible to deduplicate them, although there is no built-in uh, method for doing that in WooFind. But there is a page describing how this can be done. So now I'm going to move to the demo part, and we have uh, a pretty plain WooFind installation. Uh, this has been uh, set up uh, with an empty index. Uh, with some pretty basic settings. And I'm going to walk through the different settings required for importing the records with the source prefix and also how to set up the multi backend driver. I will be using the demo driver for both uh, sort of backends that I create for, for things to remain simple, but they could be substituted by any other ILS driver. So we will need to start by doing a little bit of configuration, like creating some uh, properties files for the import. And I will, oops, I'm just going to stop the presentation so that I can actually copy and paste information. So uh, I like to make it so that uh, all the configuration locally configured is uh, in the local directory. You could add them into the import directory, but I really like it to keep things separate. So I'm going to take the import uh, import properties, not marked properties, and copy it to the local import directory for two different backends. 
I would call them demo one and demo two. Then we will make some changes. Just to make sure that uh, the import takes uh, into account our locally defined rules for the mark records. Now that we have these uh, main properties files uh, set up, we will need to create these uh, properties files that define the rules on how to add the prefixes. I'll just copy and paste this from the example. Do the same for the other one. Just make it a different prefix for demo two. So now we have the main import uh, properties files and also the mark properties files for these imports. The second step is to do the actual import. In this example, I'm using some of the, the mark files that are provided in GoFind for tests. So it's easy to get things going. So now we are importing the journal's mark using the demo one properties file. This won't take long because the file is really small like 10 records and we will do the same for the same file with the demo2 properties this means that we will get two sets of data that are the very same records but with two different uh, prefixes now if you go to google find and do a search for all records you can see that there is like a, like this one this uh, has, uh, has the demo one as the prefix and then the actual record identifier after the period. And we also have this very same record with the demo two identifier or prefix. I'll make a search so we can see both records on the results list. Uh, now this is using the sample driver by default. So there is nothing very useful in the in the uh, holdings information or the item statuses. So I'm going to enable the multi backend driver and set it up to use the two different uh, demo backends. So there are a couple of settings I will be changing in the config.ini. In catalog section. There are a couple of settings uh, the driver to use is the main one. And uh, now it's using the sample driver, but we're switching to multi backend. Also, I'm going to enable library cars so that I can uh, add, add a couple of different cars to my account just to show how it works. Then we will take the so it should be like this. Take the default demo.ini, copy it for both of the backends. So multi backend is uh, looking for for the ini drive uh, file for each ILS by its name. What's defined in the, in the in multi backend configuration? We'll get to that in just a moment.
Now I will change the configuration files. I will add identifiers. This is uh, specific to the demo driver because they otherwise get, get their sort of uh, session storage mixed up. I will also uh, set up some static holdings information so that we can see that the information is actually coming from a different backend. So for demo one, I will make, make it say that the test sample one record is located in demo one library and it's available. I'll do the same with the demo two. I'll just give it a different identifier so that the two don't get mixed up. Uh, in a real ILS driver, uh, this is equivalent to having a different URL or different uh, other connection information that you use to connect to the ILS. So we'll just uh, pretend that uh, it defines the actual ILS that we are using. Let's just make it like unavailable so it's even easier to see. So demo2 driver has, a, has a, this uh, status information for test sample, which the test sample one record. And finally, we need to set up the multi backend driver to actually look for these drivers. And I, I have this minimal multi backend INI file here. There are three different sections uh, that we are going to add. The general one mostly that just defines uh, what's the default driver in case uh, uh, we are using functionality that uh, is not uh, does not have some information like uh, like getting the new items from the ILS. This is uh, only used for those functions and uh, usually we get this based on the bibliographic record or based on information. I'll just paste this file here. Then the driver section, so it tells uh, which prefixes use which driver. So demo one prefix uh, uses the demo driver and the same goes with demo two. The login section defines which drivers can be used for, for patrons to log in or patrons to add the library cards. I'll enable it for both cards, at least for now. So you can see how it works in real life. And now, if I've done everything correctly, we can refresh the search results and uh, see that the, the record from demo one is now located in demo one library. And this, the second record is in demo two library. So they are connected to the different demo drivers. Now, when I log in, ah, there's one thing I forgot to, to do. That was to switch from uh, a database authentication to the multi ILS authentication. So let's go back to changing the config of the INN. There is in the authentication section. Now it's using the database authentication, but I will just switch it to multi ILS. You could also use something like a choice authentication with multi ILS, and uh, now so that you could have like a shibboleth authentication in addition to choosing a library from for library card authentication. So there are several possibilities on how to combine these. But to keep it simple, I'll just enable the multi ILS authentication and go back to login. And now you can see that when I log in, I need to choose the library if I'm using. I'll just log into the demo one library with, with my credentials. And now I can go to my account and see all, all of the data that I, I have here. Now you can see that the, 
I've actually logged in before and I have two library cards and uh, I can choose which one to use and which one to get information from. So when I change the library card to demo two, I get different information from the second ILS. Switching back. Uh, well, they look pretty much the same, but it's not the same. And it's the same record, so it's easy to <laughs> get to get confused here. Let's see what we have for holes. No holes for this one. No holes for this one either. Since the demo driver kind of randomly creates this data, it can look pretty similar, but it's not quite the same, at least for this small data set. Anyway, going to library cards, I now see that I have two cards here. I can remove either one. I can add a new one. I can again choose. I can give it a name. Again, something. And now I have three different cards. Now I can go here and choose which one whichever I want to. And now again, I have two cards connected to demo two library. That's also possible. You can have multiple cards with a single library as well. So library cards can be useful also when connected to a single library. But in the backend, it becomes even more useful when you connect to several libraries. So that's all uh, for, for the simple setup. Of course, uh, when things get more complicated, you will have some ILSs that don't support logging in. Let's say that uh, only demo one allows logging in. If I go back here, I still have this library cards connected to demo two, but if I, if I now delete them and add a new one, I can only choose demo one. So it's not possible to, to choose demo two anymore. Same goes when you log out and go to login. It's not offering demo two anymore. Uh, there are some upcoming changes to multi backend to make it more, the driver itself more simple and also ready to use some. Uh, for any any future functionality. Also, while, while I said that the uh, find itself doesn't need to know much about the uh, multi backend being present, there are some situations where it's uh, where it's uh, important to for for to to for the for Wufan to convey some information about what's what's happening. Uh, for instance, when, when you log in and uh, and go to go to your account, uh, all the menu items uh, displayed here depend on the on the functionality that the backend provides. So if if there are no storage uh, retrieval requests uh, available, uh, it it won't be shown here. So in this regard, uh, uh, the information about the, which account is enabled needs to be conveyed to multi backend so that it, it can ask whether it's uh, supported by the, by the correct ILS. Other than that, uh, things should be really smooth, more smooth sailing here. So to remember, set up multi backend INI, set up the, the different INI files for, for the for the libraries, for the external ILSs. And uh, remember that this is the same as the driver, uh, uh, as the INI name. So demo one has a demo dot, demo one dot INI. And also change the settings in config.ini properly so that uh, the multi backend driver is used. And remember to uh, index uh, the records using using a source prefix. So that should be it. Hope you enjoy using multi-backing driver. Thanks.